Hey, Evan, do you want to give this a test or we'll get her later? It is on, I'm sure. But. Testing one, two, test. Testing one, two. Checking a mic here. It's all good, thank you.
Let's begin our worship together. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes. Welcome to our worship and thankful for each one that's here today. Thankful for this great country of Canada and uh, happy Canada Day weekend. And so that means we've got visitors and we've got travelers who are away, but we're all glad to be here today to worship and thankful for those who are worshiping with us online as well. We'll just remind you to keep praying for Sharon as she continues to recover in hospital in Regina. So, uh, had surgery this week, surgery went well, but recovery will probably be long and uh, up and down, so we're thankful that, that surgery went well. Pray for Sharon, and this week, Jean Bailey has surgery, and so be praying for her. I believe it is Thursday. Help me out. Thursday? So, hey? The 7th. Yeah. Thursday. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and then uh, potluck today following our worship time this morning. So if you can join us in the annex for uh, potluck, do so. Excuse me, I'm just going to turn my monitor on. Sorry about that. Let's stand and sing a couple songs and then Wally's going to lead us in our first prayer. <laughs> This is my Father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres. This creation. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. You are my strength. 
Spirits to the Lord and let Wally lead us as we direct our thoughts to God. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God in heaven, we thank you for this time, for this opportunity to be here. We thank you, Lord, for every blessing that you give us. And be with John as he brings us a message from your word. And be with our elders and our deacons as you do the work in this congregation. Give them guidance, Father, and strength and capability to make decisions that are proper, Father, for the future and the present, Father. We ask your blessing on Sharon, Father, and help her to recover and just pray that she'll be with her in a special way. We ask your blessing on Jean Bailey and be with her as she goes through th surgery and just pray for continued healing for her and for them both, Father. Bless their families and bless us here today, Father, during this day and this time of worship and the activities that will go on the rest of the day. And thank you, Lord, for Jesus and your forgiveness of our sins and the hope of the eternal life you've given us through him. And be with us all, Father, and help us to be a light in this community. And be with us during this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be seated, please. Thank you, Wally, for leading our thoughts. We'll sing uh, a couple songs in prepare, preparation for the Lord's Supper as Brother Dick Tooley will lead our thoughts this morning. Just make sure everyone has communion available, and uh, if not, we can have, that, have help getting that for you. Your only son, no sin to hide. But you have sent him from your side to walk upon this guilty sod and to become a lamb of God. Oh, lamb of God, sweet lamb of God, I love the holy lamb of God. Oh, wash me in. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. 
Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there? Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there? Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the I'm going to begin my talk here this morning with reading a chapter from the Old Testament, some 12 verses written in prophecy. This is from Isaiah. Isaiah lived some 700 years before Christ appeared on this earth. But he predicts the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ, declares the life of Jesus, his highs and lows, and as I read this, I'd like you to just recall some of the things that's written in the New Testament that are directly mentioned in this scripture. Psalms 53. Who has believed our message? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot like a dry root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering Yet we consider him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We, like, we all, like sheep, have gone astray, and each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth, he was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers is silent, so he did not even open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested, for he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked, 
and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see, no, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he, he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my servant, righteous servant, will be justified, justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death. He was numbered with the transgressors, for he bore the sins of many, and made intercession for his transgressors. Psalms 53. Jesus came into this world to show us how to live and overcome the life, life's obstacles that the devil has put in our way to try to turn us away from our Christian duties. But Christ's life began with a lowly birth in a stable. His own town of Nazareth rejected him after his first sermon. But he performed many miracles and became very popular. But then, next thing you know, he faced severe rejection, leading to his crucifixion. We come to this communion table to show our love for Jesus. And as we meet at his table, we remember his great sacrifice for us. The fact that many million people today, or this day, will assemble the first day of the week to share of this table in his memory shows that many people believe the gospel message of Jesus as the Son of God. And let us remember, it is the believers that keep the church doors open. It's not time now to partake of the bread and the cup in thoughtful meditation. We have this time because the Lord has asked us to keep this simple memory in his simple feast in the memory of his death. Remember he said, do this in remembrance of me. And first, let us take the bread. Let us give thanks. Father, we give thanks for the many blessings you've given us. We're thankful for Jesus who willingly gave up his life to save ours. Father, we're thankful for this loaf representing Christ's body. I ask you, Father, to bless this bread to our spiritual nourishment and let us meditate on that great sacrifice as we now take this loaf. In Jesus' name, amen. Next, the uh, fruit of the vine, and again, we give thanks. Father, we give thanks for this fruit of the vine, representing Christ's shed blood, shed for the forgiveness of our sins, and help us to partake of this in a worthy manner, as we remember what Christ did for us. Again, in his name we pray, amen.
just celebrated the wonderful story of love. Wonderful story of love, tell it to me again. Wonderful story of love, wake the immortal strain. Angels with rapture announce it, shepherds with wonder receive it. Sinner, oh, won't you believe it? Wonderful story of love, wonderful, 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 wonderful story of love, wonderful story of love, though you are far away, wonderful story of love, still he does Today, calling from Calvary's mountain, down from the crystal bright fountain, he from the dawn of creation, wonderful story of love, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful story of love, wonderful story of love, Jesus provides a rest, wonderful story of love, for all the pure and blessed, rest in those mansions above us, with those who've gone on before us, singing the rapturous chorus, wonderful story of love, wonderful, 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 wonderful story of love. We'll ask John to bring us our message this morning and invite the children to come up and uh, sing with us. Okay, all right, come on up and join us then. Okay, we're, this morning we're going to sing the song Deep and Wide, okay? Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Okay, in the second verse, we're going to leave out the words wide and fountain. Okay, wide and fountain. Okay, are you ready? Deep and, deep and, there's a flowing deep and Deep and deep and there's a flowing deep and whoa, that was a little tougher. Okay, now we're gonna leave out the words deep and flowing. Okay, deep and flowing, we're gonna leave out this time. Okay, are you ready? And wide and wide there's a fountain and wide and wide and wide there's a fountain and wide okay <laughs> that's pretty good uh, we don't usually sing it that way i'm impressed that i didn't get too badly messed up okay here we go if you're happy and you know it clap your hands
If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, snap your fingers. If you're happy and you know it, snap your fingers. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, snap your fingers. Well, apparently, the next verse needs to be, If you're happy and you know it, stamp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stamp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stamp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, do all four. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, do all four. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, do all four. Amen. Okay, good. Thank you. Well done. Hey, that's, that's awesome to see everybody with smiling faces. Not just the ones up here, but those of you out there as well. That's just really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you built us a good floor here, Roland. It has good acoustics, you know. <laughs> Works real good. Yeah. Okay. Well, how did it get to be July already? Like, we're... Like, where is this year gone? 2022 is halfway over. It's uh, the first Sunday in July, and I can hardly believe it. Um, but anyways, I, I, did, I found my tie. Like, where's your Canada Day tie? Um, okay. Um, yeah, I'm wearing my Canada Day tie, and I'm quite excited about uh, it being July, even though it seems a little f fast. Uh, Today starts the first week of uh, the children's camps out at Clearview Christian Camp. And uh, this evening, the, uh, uh, the girls for girls week will be coming. And then the next week, it'll be boys week. And then the week after that, it'll be our, our week that we host, which is junior camp for ages 12 down to and we're a little fuzzy on down to where. Um, we have some campers that register at, at age seven that we welcome, and, uh, and we have pre-campers that, that are there with their parents who participate in lots of stuff as well. So anyways, and the upper age is a little bit fuzzy too. How many, we have like what? Three, three 16 year olds and you know, we have junior counselors who are, uh, so anyways, um, we have lots of that happening at our week of camp, and that's exciting. And then the last week of July is Teen Week. Uh, so that's what the week of July looks like out at, out at Clearview. And, and then there's, there's other camps, of course, through August as well. So I'm excited about that. This morning we're, we're looking uh, again at uh, uh, Second Peter, but actually I'm going to begin with uh, this from the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 26 and 27. Uh, this will lead us into uh, our lesson from 2 Peter. Keep straight the path of your feet, and all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. 
There, I actually could have read a number of, from a number of places that have uh, a similar kind of uh, message about, you know, keep your path straight and don't turn to the right or to the left, but keep, keep going straight, keep on the right path. So this morning's idea as we're entering into Second Peter has to do with this idea of course correction. You know, when you get off course, when you have wandered a little bit to the right or to the left, uh, then you need to, you need to get back uh, on the right path and get going in the right direction again. Uh, when I was younger, I prided myself on being a really good driver, you know, and, uh, and as I get older, I, I notice that I'm, I'm not quite as good a driver as I was when I was younger. You know, I'm going down the highway and all of a sudden I, I feel the rumble strips of the shoulder and oh, I need to move over again. And then I'm going down the highway again and I'm, I'm admiring things out in the field or off in the distance or whatever. And then I realize that, oh, I'm wandering too close to the center line. I need to get, get back into my lane again. Uh, course corrections, okay? We, we, and we understand that physically and... Uh, but I think we also understand that in terms of our, our spiritual life as well. We need to make course corrections quite often. Uh, we, we have a tendency to get off offline and off target. And uh, part of the reason that we, we meet uh, in the way that we do and we have a lesson and we uh, have the Lord's Supper uh, is and, and we pray together and we encourage each other is because each of us needs this course correction uh, in our lives. We need to refocus and, and recalibrate our direction and make sure that we're still going the right way. Or as my, uh, my GPS likes to say when I get off course, recalculating. And it, it does that to me quite often. I will need more than a few course corrections in my lifetime before I reach my eternal destination. But course correction is only one of many operations I will need to undergo uh, to stay on the right course. Here's a list of operations that will keep me on the course. First of all, there's course direction. Then there's course projection. Then there's course correction. Then there's course protection. And then there's course perfection. What do I mean by all of that? Well, course direction. The first thing I need is to have my life pointed in the right direction. You know, there's no use talking about correction if I'm not going in the right direction or I don't know where the right direction is. I need to know what direction so that I can make a course correction, right? And then course projection. Once my life is pointed in the right way, well, then I need to move in that direction. There's a destination for my life in God's kingdom, but I can't get there just by turning my face towards it and staying in one place. I need to be projected into motion and move towards the goal until I get there. That's what I mean by course projection. Then we can talk about course correction, about steering, making directional adjustments to keep me on line with the target. What do I mean by course protection? Well, there are obstacles, there are hurdles, there's enemies with which I constantly battle that if not dealt with will drag me offline or stop me dead in my tracks. Against Satan, against the pull of the world, against my own weaknesses, against my own willful wandering, I need course protection, okay? I need God to help me deal with all of those things. And then finally, there's course perfection. Ultimately, I need to arrive 
in the arms of Jesus. Most of what makes the pursuit of God's kingdom and his righteousness worthwhile is a permanent home in eternity with God, resurrected and transformed into unimaginable bliss, coarse perfection. So I want you to think about those things as we look at a few more verses from 2 Peter. I'm going to read 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. 2 through 4. And think about these things we've talked about as our, our life course as I read these verses. May grace and peace be yours in abundance in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything needed for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Thus he has given us through these things his precious and very great promises so that through them you may escape from the corruption that is in the world because of lust and, be, and may become participants of the divine nature. We're going to encounter a lot in the book of Second Peter about what uh, we need to do. You know, there's things about our behavior, about our choices, about our attitude, about our mindset, about our actions. There's, there's a lot of things in the book of Second Peter about all of that. But, I, but we pointed out last time, and it's being underscored again today, all of what needs to happen in my life and in your life begins with what God does. Okay? It begins with what God does. Uh, actually, it's not going to matter what I try to do uh, until, until I let God in and let God do what God does. Okay? If I try to just make myself a good person, I'm going to make myself a good person. Um, well, uh, there are a lot of people who try that without God. And uh, it's, it's a fruitless endeavor. Uh, it ends in frustration and usually abandonment. Uh, we need God. And, and Peter starts with that. Peter learned that lesson. and we, we talked about that last time. We won't go over all that again. Peter needed to learn that lesson. Uh, he, he was started off as a disciple of Jesus uh, trying to do everything uh, that he thought he could do and had to learn over and over again he needed the power of God to do what God needed to do through him. And when, when he let that happen, then Peter became uh, a marvelous disciple and apostle and servant of, of God. And we can get there too. So let's look at these things uh, that are mentioned in these verses. Uh, we, we did notice uh, last time we dwelt on things like the, the and, but we'll look at them just for a moment again, uh, because they are mentioned in verses 2 and 3. Grace and peace are yours from God in abundance. Okay? Not much is going to happen good in our lives without the grace and peace of God that he gives to us in abundance along with the righteousness that is from him mentioned in verse 1. And then in verses 2 and 3, and more in this chapter, knowledge of God. Okay, knowledge of God. So let's be reminded about that. But today we're going to focus on these three things that are mentioned in verses 2 to 4. Three necessary supplies for living the Christian life are these. First of all, divine power. Second of all, divine promises. And thirdly, divine nature. Okay, we'll take 
uh, just a few minutes and identify what those are and be sure that we're committed to starting with those things if we're going to, you know, make course corrections uh, that, are, that are gonna actually mean anything in terms of, of, of our life. So verse three talks about divine power. His divine power has given us everything needed for life and godliness. Divine power. What kind of power does God have that can give us course projection, protection, perfection, and in times like now, course correction? What kind of power does God have? Well, there's a lot of places we could go with this. You know, in, a, in, our, in our worship this morning, we sang several hymns that focused on the power of God as creator and the things that he, he's done in creation that, that demonstrate the power that God has. So there's this interesting verse in Romans, Romans chapter 1 and verse 20, which says this, Ever since the creation of the world, God's eternal power and divine nature, invisible though they are, have been seen and understood through the things God has made. God's limitless power is on display in the world around us. We see it in, in creation. We see it, we see it when we look out into uh, space. We, we see it when we, we just look in the atmosphere where, where the clouds and the wind and, and the, the rain or the sun. We see, it in, uh, we see it in the fields. We see it in the forests. We see it in the mountains. We see it in the ocean. We see it in the animals, we see it in the birds and the fish. We even see it in the insects. We see it through the telescope, we see it through the microscope. We see the limitless and marvelous power of God. And what with this limitless power, does God choose to do? Well, according to Peter, with this divine power, he gives us everything we need for life and godliness. That's what God, that's what God has chosen to do with his divine power. Have you ever thought, what would you do if you won the lottery? I don't know why I even think about that, because I never buy lottery tickets. So, <laughs> But, but what, what would I do if I won the lottery? I, it's funny, because I do think about that sometimes. What if I, you know, what if I won $60 million? What would I do with that? What would I do if, uh, if I was... Uh, physically big and strong. I've never been physically big and strong. I know you're surprised to hear that. But I, I've never been physically big and strong. What would I do? Would I, would I be a, a professional athlete? Would I, uh, would I, I work at, at, at some job that required great physical strength? What would I do? If I had that kind of strength and that kind of power, what would I do? What would I do if I was, if I was super intelligent? You know, if I had that intellectual power of the mind that I suffer from the lack of, apparently. <laughs> you know, what would I do if I had that kind of power? Well, what does God do with his divine power? In his unselfishness, in his nature of love, 
and creativity and glory and beauty and grace, what God chooses to do with his divine power is to create the people that we are and to teach us and instill in us and to grow in us life and godliness. He tries to help us become as much as possible living creatures who reflect the goodness of him. That's what he does with his divine power. That's what he chooses to do. You are how God has chosen to exercise his power. Ephesians 3 and verse 20. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly more than all we can ask or imagine. The divine power of God. Why, why would we try to live without it? You know, why, why would we try to make our life good, make our life meaningful, try and do something worthwhile, and not tap into that power? Peter is reminding us we need to begin there. And we need to let that be the dry, that needs to be the course projection, the power that we live in and that pushes us in the course of our life, the divine power of God. Verse 4 talks about divine promises. Thus he has given us through these things his very precious and great promises. Oh, there's so much we could, we could cover in talking about the promises of God. Let's just, let's just mention these two. The salvation, the, the taking away of our sins by the blood of Jesus Christ, that promise, and the Holy Spirit that is promised to us. Those two promises fulfilled and applied to us. What what a marvelous blessing they are. You know, in, in Acts chapter 2, those two promises of God were, were especially put on stage in the city of Jerusalem when the, uh, when, when the 12 and, and the other, the there were 120 believers, uh, stepped forward from the upper room where they'd been praying, and God had given them Power, especially the, the 12, they, they stood and they were able to, by the power of the Holy Spirit, and, they, and Peter was the preacher that day, interestingly enough, the guy who wrote Second Peter here, and Peter talked about the promises, and, and he said, the promise is for you and for your children and for those who are far off. The promise of what? Well, there were two things that were being promised that day. One was salvation, the, the, the forgiveness of sins. They were all invited to come and, 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 and be baptized, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. And what was the other part of the promise? And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That was the other part of the promise that was being offered that day to you and to your children and to those who are far off. The marvelous promises of God. So, the divine power, the divine promises, and then also, thus he has given us 
through these things, his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may escape from the corruption that is in the world because of lust and become participants of the divine nature. So that, that's the third thing, is the divine nature of God. We are not trapped by our sinful human nature. Not anymore. You know, Paul talks about the tr feeling trapped by it in Romans chapter 7. And, and we've all felt this trap. You know, I, I know what it is I'm, I should do, and, but so often I fail to get it done. And I know the things that are not good... I know what my weaknesses are and, and what my mistakes are, and I try not to do those things, and yet those are the things I find myself doing over and over again. Paul talks about that in Romans chapter 7. Who will rescue me? Romans 8 verses 9 and 11 says this. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit. Since the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, then the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. God gives us, through his Spirit, he builds within us the divine, his divine nature. And as Paul talks about that in other places, as we start to, to show that, he calls that the fruit of the Spirit. You know, things like love and patience and kindness and self-control and all those things. The divine nature of God. So that's what God brings to the table. Starting with our next lesson, we're going to look at, okay, what, what do we add? What do we add to our faith? But this is what God brings to the table. He brings his divine power, he brings his divine promises, and he brings his divine nature, and he brings them to us and says, these are for you, for you to live by. For you to be transformed into my image and to become my children. God's grace is for you in 2022. Jesus. 
his way forward to lead us in a closing prayer I'd like for us to quote one of the scriptures that John uh, referred to and read and the only reason I know it is because of the song now to him who is able to do you know by acapella now he, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine let's all say it together if you know it all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. It is always, <coughs> excuse me, it's always good to be here with all of you. It's so much of a pleasure to come and see faces that are familiar and people that are coming here to worship God together. So let's pray and give thanks for this day. Our Father in heaven, we do thank you for the life that we have in Christ. We thank you for the blessings that we have and the hope of eternal life through him. We're happy, Father, to have had the opportunity to break bread in remembrance of his body and the fruit of the vine which represents his blood, which was poured out on Calvary for us. We do thank you, Father, for each one that is here. We pray and bless and ask your, your care for each one and encouragement, and let us be encouragement an encouragement to one another. God be with us through this, this uh, rest of this day in the beginning of this uh, celebration of the country that you have provided for us. We do thank you over and over again for our love. We pray for those that are needing health and care, and we pray that you'll watch over each one. Guide us now and do forgive us of our sins. And we, our fa Father, we are happy to be here to worship you together. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.